Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So, there have been a few updates to Automation recently, and I just noticed there's a multiplayer tab here. That is pretty interesting, but today we're going back into the sandbox, just as usual, to come up with something a little bit different. So people have been asking for quite a while about making another version of the Bugo, or at least tuning the Bugo in some ways, and so that is what we're going to do today. This is just a little bit of a bonus build for you. This is the basic Bugo right here. It's got 27 horsepower, 900cc i4. On stream one time, I did make a Bugo Sport, but we're not going to be going quite that extensive. I believe the Bugo Sport is like a full quality slider type thing. I have a different idea for this Bugo. So all we need to do is clone this one and we'll be right off. Okay, so here's a refresher on the stats of the Bugo. It weighs 767.1 kilos. It has 27 horsepower. Uh, it's front wheel drive. It's very, very small, uh, but it is very lovable. Let's try and see if we can make it a little bit better by turbo tuning it. So because I have cloned it, uh, we cannot change these materials and we're not going to be changing the quality, which gave me the idea. Also, we can't change displacement or block material or anything like that. Uh, but it gave me the idea. Somebody actually wrote this in the comments one time and I was like, hmm, that's not bad. Why don't we put the highest quality materials that we can on it, but keep the quality as low as possible and then see if we can do anything with that. Like already we fixed the knocking because we've got good materials, but quality is still negative 15. And that's going to stay that way through all of this. So we're going to keep turbocharging, uh, or we're going to add turbocharging, I mean, with a race preset. But we're going to lower the quality all the way down. And we'll see if we can tune a little bit more power. I mean, we've already gained 10. So if we continue down here, we could do a four barrel carb on this, which probably looks a little ridiculous. Oh, you can't really see it. Or we could go injection. I think we'll probably go injection. And then we're going to switch to super let it as well. But again, negative 15. All right, we are already up to, I believe it's at 41 horsepower with the exhaust down a little bit. That's not bad. We've already gained quite a bit. I think my goal for this is maybe 60. Uh, we might be able to get 60 horsepower. That would be more than doubling what it had before. So that would be pretty sweet. Now, because we have a turbo, we do have a lot of options in terms of tuning. However, everything is very low quality. So I'm going to say... Actually, it can rev up pretty high before the valves start to float, so that's not too bad. We'll leave it up there because it keeps, well, it's still all green, which is good. Uh, what we can do, though, is we could probably raise up the compression just a little bit. All right, compression is up. Let's raise the cam profile as well. Oh, okay, this, yeah, this is actually going to get us quite a bit of power here. Already up to 50. It seems my 60 dream might not be so much of a dream. And again, we need to raise the RPM limit. Okay, and we're running out of fuel. Uh, not good. 53 horsepower with those tweaks. I feel if we go up any higher with that, we're going to break it. Uh, compressor size. Seems bigger is not always better in this case. And turbine size. Uh, by lowering this, we should be able to gain a decent amount of power. So the only thing that's restrictive right now is the intake. Uh, maybe we could switch back to carb and see if that actually does any better than the old style fuel injection. Uh, yeah, let's give that a shot. We'll go four barrel carb and see if that helps. Oh no, <laughs> knocking, unfortunately. Okay, so a four barrel, barrel carb is just a little bit better in terms of power, so we'll go with that. Uh, we could actually go twin carb as well. That might, I don't know if that's actually going to be any better. We do have a lot of options in terms of carburetors. Like, I don't usually use them. I almost always go with injection, so this is a bit of a difference for me. Okay, there we go. I just lowered the compression a little bit, and by tweaking the turbine size, we are getting up into the boost. That is 65 horsepower. That's actually quite a bit. Uh, we're just having a re restriction on the turbine, and that's giving us... Uh, a decent amount of power and our intakes we currently have the dual carburetor on but that is pretty restrictive i'm going to go back to four barrel and that does seem to have helped a little bit but it means our torque curve is quite um mountainous all right so i'm lowering compression back down just slowly uh so that we can get a little bit more power again with the air ratios and such uh lowering this air ratio is actually changing the curve pretty significantly but it is lowering peak power. All right, 67 horsepower seems to be a hard position to get any further past. Um, I'm good with 67 horsepower, though. That is a significant jump for this car. 
We could try a bit of the cam profile, but I don't know. Okay, 68. Hmm. Is it going to start knocking soon? We'll see. That's smoothing out the curve a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll stick with the 68 there. That's not bad, actually. That is quite good. I did not suspect that this small engine would be able to more than double in power just with better quality parts. Or, yeah, I guess better quality parts, but still low on the quality sliders. All right, I think I'm good with that. We've got a very restrictive turbine, which is actually a good thing in this case, as it's giving us quite a bit of power. A very small turbo, which I think makes sense. A uh, very, well, I'm going to say that's a pretty crappy turbo intake, but anyway, it's it's kind of an old engine. It's 1980s. I think I'm satisfied with that. I've gone ahead and named it the Bugo Sport, and the engine is the Turbo Bugo, uh, the 68 horsepower variation of the base engine. It's like the same thing, only with some hop-up parts, pretty much. Uh, one thing that is causing issues with this car is the body quality. It means that the back end, like, flops around quite a bit, uh, so <laughs> we'll just have to leave that for now. Now, the, it does have quite a bit more power, but I don't want to change the look of it too much. I just want to keep it pretty basic. So what we're going to do is maybe change the color and then uh, probably change the exhaust. And I guess we'll have to do all the suspension and stuff again, just because it's got quite a bit more power. It's probably going to need wider wheels. We'll see, though. That's automation basic red there. Uh, what I want to do, though, is let's let's come up with a new red. This is the old and then this is automation basic. Uh, neither of them really work for this. So what about a blue bugo? Uh, we'll just have it a nice basic buco blue color. Goodness, everything's going to end up with a U on it. Uh, with no flake at all because they can't afford that. But a nice high shine. Just super basic, but it's going to work. And we'll make the hood that color as well. I think I... Well, actually, the bugo in blue is not bad. Uh, one thing that we should do, though, this is the bugo sport. So it's going to need some sort of designation. Uh, it is also the Bugo Turbo, so maybe we could put a Turbo badge on there. Oh, that is very fitting. <laughs> Actually, no, it's it's not. That's more of a Porsche Turbo badge there. This works, but I want to be a little bit more creative. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll go with this. We'll just say they ripped the badge off of a Porsche that was parked on the street and slapped it on their Bugo. Okay, in terms of wheels, uh, I don't know what kind of narrative we're pulling here, but I'm going to say that whoever owns this Bugo is... Uh, wanting to make it look like it performs a little bit better than it used to, so they'll put new wheels on it, and they probably will end up lowering it as well. Uh, but currently the game is frozen. It doesn't want to process the wheels. So the game did freeze there for a bit, and I had to restart it. I did not, not want to process the might of the Bugo. Hopefully the wheels don't lag. Okay, we're good. I was worried that by clicking the wheels again it would break the game once again, but thankfully not this time. Let's go ahead and choose some different wheels for it this time, though. Oh, there we go. Hubcaps. Oh, no. Uh, I just wanted some, like, alloy-looking wheels. These wheels actually do have the appearance of being something that would be put on here stock, so I'm going to say that those are going to be fine. Uh, we'll leave them on for now. As with most things Bugo, we're not really going for the dashing good looks. It's more about the simplicity and the practicality of it and the 27 horsepower. Okay, in terms of looks, I think we're good. Like, the Bugo doesn't need too much just to be a, a sport version. I think that's going to be all that it really needs for now. However, in drivetrain, uh, things are about to get a little more complicated. We do have wheel spin issues. Oh, boy. Okay, let's up the Bugo to be a 5-speed. That seems pretty necessary. That unfortunately raises the wheel spin issues, which is odd. Uh, this is not nearly high enough, so that's probably why we have picked up another 30 km per hour in the top speed. Okay, that, that does help quite a bit. I'm going to raise up the spacing. It seems like it's going to need it. Uh, we're going to keep the open diffs, which is probably a mistake. Uh, we may change that in a bit, but one thing that will help a bit, uh, we're going to switch to a sports compound, which should help with the wheel spin. Yeah, it definitely did. And we're going to make the wheels just a little bit wider. Um, we'll check the drivability of all this as well, but just for now, we'll keep them as, uh, let's do 155s all around. And the brakes, uh, we'll have to come back to that once we get the graphs. No downforce, it's probably not going to be needed. And let's just say they took out the back seats as a weight savings. I think we're good on that. And oh boy, okay, yeah, we'll get to the suspension in a second. But the weight is about the same. And 
power, obviously times 2.5, I guess, but not bad. Okay, let's make sure that it actually drives properly. All right, so our first graph to deal with here, uh, 0 to 100 in 19 seconds. Yikes, that is real slow. Um, <laughs> not much we can really do about that. It doesn't hit 100 until uh, fourth gear, so you really have to get moving. I guess we could probably up this. That might help with that a little bit. It might not at all. Okay, well, we'll just leave that for now. Um, when it comes to wheels and stuff, you can see our drivability is 99%, but our sportiness is pretty low. Uh, this being out of the actual range here is not a good thing, so we'll try and get it into that range. Back wheels don't have to be big on this, so we'll just shrink those down, and it's actually perfectly in line there. That is not bad. Uh, front wheels... Front wheels are actually going to be bigger than rear wheels for whatever reason, but it works for this, so... Yeah, we'll have bigger front wheels than back wheels. Uh, <laughs> yikes. Just to compensate for that, I'm going to raise the back wheels out just a little bit more so it doesn't look as noticeable. There we go. That's not bad, actually. That's right in between the lines where it should be. I think that's pretty much perfect. And brakes. Uh, okay, so our brake grip here is is there, and our brakes are up here. And actually, we're good on brakes. We don't even need to adjust them. I guess the weight didn't really change too much, so that's fine. And obviously downforce is uh, actually uplift, because <laughs> it has no downforce, it has no wings. That's fine. Basic, basic seats, that's perfect. And I think we are good to go. Let's go take this Bugo out for a spin. I'm interested to see... Uh, how it compares to its predecessor. Right, so this is the original Bugo, and then this is the Bugo Turbo, or Bugo Sport. Uh, <laughs> let's do a few comparisons between the two. Now, I have taken them both out for a quick drive just to make sure that things are working properly. Let's go ahead and do the Bugo F Sport first, and I'll explain uh, what went wrong with the build and what we could probably do a little bit better, but... Ultimately, spoiler alert, it is faster. Just not by much. Okay, let's go. Uh, I am using the realistic gearbox this time around because the Bugos are really easy to shift. So let's drive all the way to the end and see how fast we can get before we hit the wall way down there. High in the revs and we're off. Now this Bugo is not particularly quick. I, again, it's just an under 70 horsepower car. It's not that fast, but it is a pretty significant upgrade from the Bugo itself. Uh, you can see we're currently at 90 kilometers an hour. This kind of thing would not really pass on the Canadian highways, uh, just because you can barely get up to 100, and it's just a little dangerous. Now, okay, when we hit the wall, we were at 108. But at 108, we didn't even get up to 5th gear. <laughs> I don't think we even need that 5th gear. Alright, here's the original Bugo. Prepare your ears, it is very loud. And... Off to the races. Unfortunately, revving up this Bugo doesn't really do much. But... Yeah, uh, <laughs> up to 40... Well, 50 kilometers an hour. Things get a little sketchy in this. Okay, barely... Barely 80. I believe this one is a 4 speed. But I don't want to shift up because it doesn't make any sense to right now. That is, well, approximately 83 uh, when we hit the wall. So that's a pretty significant difference. That's like, that's a, wait, what is that? 40 kilometer difference there? Almost? All right, so back to the sport. Let's just drive it around a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll try to stay out of the high RPMs as things t tend to go wrong there. If you just let it, like, rev uh, like this... Actually, from first gear to second gear, it seems to break the game, so we'll try to avoid doing that. Yeah, so I think one mistake with this was that I made it a 4-speed, or a 5-speed. It should have been a 4-speed, uh, just because that 5th gear is not really usable in this car. It's just not necessary. Uh, I don't think it does too much. Obviously, the gear ratios are affected by having an extra speed, and we probably would be quicker with a 4-speed, but I think it's fine for now. Obviously, if it had 167 horsepower, the 5 speed would be very ne needed, but as of right now, a 4 speed is pretty much all you need, unless you're going in a straight line for a pretty significant amount of time, because uh, 
gear three is where this thing really shines, and then gear four is kind of, I don't know, it's the top end, but it's not really usable. I really like the color of it. I think the color turned out quite well. Uh, in terms of grip and drivability, it actually seems to be pretty decent, uh, especially for a Bugo. It bounces around a lot because we didn't change the suspension. Uh, that was something I was thinking about doing, but then decided against it. We just, I wanted to keep the stock Bugo look. Plus the drivability was fine, so we didn't really need to do much to, uh, to get it into the 70 horsepower range. So I think we need to take these cars on a track that is much more made for Bugos. Uh, maybe a go-kart track? Let's see. Alright, so what we're going to do is the industrial site, short race circuit, it's all pavement, should be pretty easy for these cars. I think it's going to be perfect just because it has a nice long straight and a couple of twisty bends there, so it should be good. Uh, we're going to do two laps, I may regret that because the original Bugo is going to take forever, but this should be pretty interesting. I hope that uh, we can get some good times out of this. And we'll be starting off first with the Bugo Sport or Bugo Turbo. Let's give it a go. Oh boy. Uh, okay, I forgot I'm in arcade. We'll switch to realistic for this testing. I definitely need to get used to the realistic gearbox. Uh, if anybody has any wheel recommendations, by the way, then uh, please let me know. I am definitely um, looking to, to get one at some point. Alright, so it seems like most of these twisty corners can be done in second gear uh, with the Bugo Turbo. Uh, and then up into third gear there, but again, not really needed. It seems like second gear for the entire track, except for the straight bit here. This track is definitely a good one for the Bugos though, just because... Wow, it, this thing is shaky. Um, but just because it's such a, a small track, like, the turns are very small, the track itself is very small. It just makes it a lot easier to drive with these very low horsepower cars. Yeah, it seems like you can leave it in second gear with this car pretty much the entire time. But that is a time of... Well, okay, what's the total? 32 seconds is our best lap. Uh, but a total time of a minute and nine seconds. Okay, not too bad. So it is time to take the original Bugo out on the track. And then we'll do one more car after this. I think you'll know which one I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, let's see what this one is like. Again, we'll go for a realistic gearbox. Oh boy, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit slower. I wonder what gear it's going to be stuck in for most of this one though. Probably third, I would suspect. Um, or maybe second. Probably not going to need to hit the brakes too often here. Um, shifting up and down is uh, not something I'm particularly uh, knowledgeable of in terms of cornering and such. Like, I don't, because I usually drive with an auto gearbox, I don't really know what to do, but I think that the Bugo is a pretty good way to practice for it. And it seems like second gear is going to be what it is around the track here. Like, the RPM limit there is shaking so much. <laughs> I'm afraid of this thing now. Our first lap there was a 40 second lap, so clearly slower. I, I mean, that's to be expected, uh, but I really just want to know how much slower. Okay, this is actually a very clean lap so far, though. I think that this should be the definitive lap for the Bugo, probably the best it can do, and that is a 34 seconds, so it's only about 2 seconds slower. Yikes. Yeah, so 2 seconds slower, but a 6 seconds slower overall, because the first lap didn't turn out so well. So let's do one more car, and we'll see what that one does. Yeah, it's the modular VFR, the Bugo-powered version, in fact. Uh, we will eventually put more engines into this, but I just want to test it in the Bugo form to see what that's like. So let's give it a go. And again, we'll be going into realistic gearbox. Uh, this car is, I mean, it's a Bugo, but it's a much faster Bugo. I want to see if this will actually compete with the Bugo Sport. Now, braking is probably never, never going to be a needed thing on this, uh, just because it's, well, it's a much better handling car than the other two. Uh, much more race-oriented, we'll say. Wow, this is so loud. Just leaving it in second gear and having the RPMs go up and down and stuff is, like, deafening. Wow, okay, that was a 34-second lap. That's actually comparable to the Bugo's uh, drive-through time, uh, so that's good. I forgot what the Bugo Sports time in that area was, but... Oh, I forgot to shift down. Uh oh it's going to affect our lap time. And this car is going to be nuts when we put some heavy, like, big engines into it. But that is a 30 second lap time. Goodness. 
So it seems like the chassis really does make a pretty significant difference. It's not just the engine, because that's the original Buco engine in there, and uh, we managed to go faster than something that is two and a half times as powerful. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, just a little bit of a tweak on the old Bugo formula there, making something turbocharged with high quality components and then just comparing it to its predecessor. Just want to give a special thank you to those who have chosen to support the channel, specifically Will. Uh, thank you again. If you want to do that, it's the join button and uh, your name will appear here in the credits with these other people. And that's it for this video. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned until later this week where we're probably going to be doing something to the tune of... Brabus.